Hey everyone, we're back. Here we go again. And, so yep. um, we have with us a celebrity. Yes, Mari. <laughs> Ishukan. Ishukan. Hey. Yeah. Now there are a lot of people who are waiting to see you here, Ish. So I'm not going to keep them waiting. We are just going to bring you in right away. <laughs> hey, Ish. Hi. Hey, Ish. How are you doing? Hello, Marin. Hello, uh, Vidush. Uh, I'm doing fine. How are you guys doing? Awesome. It's so glad to have you. Yeah, I'm psyched Same for here. your session, by the way. Uh, yeah. Oh, Seth, okay. Seth, yeah, that's, that's probably something I'm going to try out. This is something I always wanted to do. Um, cool. Ish, why don't you just tell us a bit about yourself and uh, what you do before we dive right into the session? Uh, well... You know, my name is Ish Sukan. I, I'm a systems architect at uh, La Sentinelle. I, I'm a usual suspect at local events, so uh, be it meetups, conferences. So, well, you, mu you must be seeing me at those things, uh, those events. I, I have a blog. I write a lot about uh, the local tech scene on my blog, hacklog.in. And lastly, I'm an OpenSUSE member. Hey, you can see it here, OpenSUSE member. Uh, currently, I'm in the elections committee of this uh, open source project. So that should be all. <laughs> That's enough, actually. That's I think awesome. a lot of people already, <laughs> yeah, they already know you. I think they know so, you. <laughs> <laughs> we got OpenSUSE everywhere there, uh, on the shirt, behind him, the small <laughs> plushie. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I want one too. <laughs> Next time. Okay. Physical conference. <laughs> yeah, physical conference, yeah. giveaways. Um, so you know what, Ish, we are just going to let you get into your session, have fun, enjoy, and for the viewers, feedback, comments, um, anything you want in the chat, we'll be with you. All right, let's go. Okay, Ish, All the right. floor is yours. Thank you very much, Marin, and thank you, Vidush. Uh, so let's uh, dive in into the presentation. So this slide already spoken about, we can skip. Uh, so this presentation is going to be about uh, self-hosted uh, private cloud. But before we come to that, let's, uh, let's say when I, if I ask you the question about cloud, uh, what would you think? You can already see on the screen. Most people, if uh, they hear about file hosting, uh, file hosting services or, or cloud services or document sharing, they would think firstly about Dropbox, uh, Google Drive, or maybe OneDrive or Microsoft Office uh, 365, something like that. Well, there are uh, others as well, but I chose these three uh, for, for this particular slide because they are the most popular. So uh, what is the problem with these three? Well, actually, to be honest, there's no problem. They are fine, they are great services, they are affordable. If you're using it for your business, it's uh, relatively cheap, I must say, for a great service. But we are in a constantly changing world. Uh, internet is changing, well, not internet, the internet scope is changing uh, with the advent of so many services, so many kind of technologies that are now pulling uh, on the advantages of internet. Uh, some people would say that data is the new oil. Some say that data is the new currency. And yes, once you start putting your data on the internet, it becomes currency for somebody else. Somebody else can make money out of that. And because of that, uh, data protection laws have started becoming very strict around the world, but not started becoming. They have already became uh, already become very strict. Uh, I'm not going to to dive into the uh, European data protection laws, GDPR, or whatsoever. But I'm going to stick about stick on the data protection uh, laws in Mauritius. So the Data Protection Act of Mauritius was amended in 2017, and uh, if you look at specifically at the section 36, paragraph one there are these two points where it says that a controller, that is uh, the, the company or the person uh, that is uh, collecting the information, or a processor, uh, an entity that is processing the information on behalf of the controller, uh, may transfer personal data to another country that is in our context outside Mauritius, where he or it has provided to the commissioner 
proof of appropriate safeguards with respect to the protection of personal data. Now, we, if we stick to this line, so if you collect personal data of maybe your clients, your partners, or even your employees, and you have to move these data on the cloud, all right, outside of Mauritius, you need to have proof and give those proof, uh, the proof of appropriate safeguards to the commissioner, to the data protection commissioner of Mauritius. This is one. It is a headache, trust me, uh, to take uh, the responsibility of so much of personal data or sensitive personal data. Secondly, in such a situation when you're, you have to move the personal data of your clients or your partners outside of Mauritius, you have to give explicit consent, uh, sorry, uh, your, your clients and your uh, employees have to give you explicit consent uh, that they are agreeing to this transfer of data outside of Mauritius after you have informed them of the possible risk of this transfer. Now, this line in itself is extremely complete, complicated and it, uh, it uh, how, do you, how can you say that? It uh, gives you an idea on the amount of responsibility that will be on your shoulders. So, instead of getting into such a situation when you, where you will have to provide proof to the Data Protection Commissioner or you will have to uh, give all sorts of reasons to your clients, to your employees and uh, take the responsibilities on your shoulder, why not have a system where you can keep uh, uh, the personal data, sensitive personal data, uh, financial data of your clients, your customers, your employees on your premises, that is within your company network and within the boundaries and jurisdiction of Mauritius and at the same time benefit from all the advantages that the cloud offers. So, that brings us to this software, Nextcloud. So what is Nextcloud? Nextcloud, if you look at it later on uh, in the slides, I have some screenshots. If you look at it, it's going to look almost similar to Google Drive or maybe OneDrive. So Nextcloud is a free and open source file hosting software. It, uh, it has been developed by Nextcloud GmbH, a German company, and the community. So it's not you know, uh, a fully corporate uh, sponsored uh, software. But there is a big community behind it, uh, which is still growing. It, the project is based in Germany, but they have contributors from around the world. It was forked from own cloud, uh, which is another uh, open source software uh, in 2016 by Frank Karlicek. Now, Frank is the original developer of own cloud and because of some disagreements uh, uh, with own cloud in 2016, he left the project, make, made a fork, and uh, out of that, Nextcloud was born. And when Frank left own cloud in 2016, a lot of the core developers moved along with him. Next, uh, Nextcloud is written in PHP. Uh, it can be accessed uh, using a web browser, pretty easy. Uh, it has mobile applications for Android, for iOS, as well as desktop clients for Linux, Windows, and macOS, which means you can basically use it on any platform. Uh, the latest uh, stable version is 1903, and it was released on the first day of the Virtual Developers Conference 2020, that is on the 9th of September. All right, let's move on. Uh, a few key features about Nextcloud, we can start with it is a document management system, so you can manage your documents, your files, your photos, etc. Uh, files are accessible via WebDAV, which means that uh, I'm not going to dive into the DAV uh, protocol, uh, which is a digital authoring and versioning, uh, but I would simply tell you that uh, thanks to WebDAV, you can mount your Nextcloud drive on your local computer, be it Windows, Linux, or Mac OS, you can just mount it as if you're mounting a shared drive on the local network. And then you can just, you know, drop files here. It will be automatically synced on Nextcloud, or open the file, do some modification, then save, and those changes will automatically be replicated on the file on, the, uh, on your Nextcloud server. 
Next, uh, files are encrypted during transit. This is very important for privacy and security. So if uh, somebody intercepts the data during the transit, well, it will be encrypted and useless to the person. Uh, next cloud comes uh, with a built-in user and group administrations so that you can have your access control list. You can share files uh, and folders with other users in the same next cloud instance. Uh, or you can use an external uh, user group database, for example, LDAP, or you can use OpenID. I did not mention OpenID here because um, I'm... Uh, I really like LDAP. I've been using that uh, for some of my Nextcloud installations, and it's uh, flawless. It's awesome. Next, uh, you have federated sharing across Nextclouds. Uh, I will skip on this part because uh, later on I have a slide where I explain what federated is, so we can skip it. Also, you have shared calendar. Uh, thanks to the CalDAV protocol, you have groups and contacts thanks to CodeDAV. You also have a mail extension which means you can convert your next cloud instance into a, a webmail client. You have a talk extension, which is a video uh, video communication uh, platform, a little bit like uh, like Jitsi, like uh, how do you call that? You, like all the other online uh, video communication tools. All right. You can have document collaboration just like uh, Google Docs. Okay, several people are uh, collaborating on the same document at the same time. You can have that in Nextcloud by using Collabora Online, uh, which is based on LibreOffice, or you can use only Office Document Server. Well, to cut this slide short, I will just mention that Nextcloud has over 200 extensions, which means you start with a simple. Uh, Simple, simple, how do you call that? Simple Nextcloud instance. And with all those extensions, you can turn it into a super powerful, robust uh, uh, groupware solution. All right. Uh, what will be next? How do you get Nextcloud? Very simple. You just head to nextcloud.com slash install, and there are different ways you can obtain and, you know, install Nextcloud. So the first one would be simple. You can download a tarball or a zip file, and then it's just a bunch of, P, uh, of PHP files we, you put, which you put uh, on your web server and the usual you know, installation process, all right? Uh, secondly, you can use a web installer. What is the web installer now? It's just one PHP file which you put on your web server, and then you point your browser to to the location of that uh, that file, and you follow the uh, the on-screen instructions to complete the installation. Finally, you have a Nextcloud instance up and running. Uh, third which is probably the most easiest of all, you can download uh, a virtual machine and run it on your infrastructure, or you can have a container image that comes with the Nextcloud uh, files and uh, installation pre-configured. Pre all right, and probably if you want to jump into um, an experiment with Nextcloud, this would be the ideal way to go. And it brings us to our next slide. For example, on my machine, I'm an avid Linux user. I like using Podman. Podman is a container engine, uh, just like Docker. Uh, probably if you are using Docker, you just replace Podman with Docker and with the same options. And you can have an instance of Nextcloud running in just a few minutes. So if you look at this command, it's simple. I'm calling Podman. I'm asking Podman to run in um, detached mode. I'm giving it the name Nextcloud Demo. I'm exposing the port, uh, the containers port 80 to my host uh, port 8080, and I'm specifying the image name Nextcloud. Uh, the Nextcloud container image is hosted on the Docker. Docker Hub. So the full the full address would be docker.io slash library slash nextcloud. But if you're using Docker or if you're using Podvine, you just have to type nextcloud and it's 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 done. It should work. 
So once uh, this command is complete uh, successfully, next you can open your browser, you type localhost uh, and you specify uh, the port 8080, which earlier on, earlier in the slide, we specified number put one command, and this is what you're going to get. It is uh, the first page of Nextcloud. Here, you just have to specify your username and a password, and you click on finish setup, and you will have a fully featured Nextcloud instance on your machine. But bear in mind, uh, by default, Nextcloud here is using SQLite as database because most probably you're going to use this for demo purposes. You don't really need a fully featured uh, RDMS like MySQL or MariaDB. But if you're going on production, definitely consider switching this to uh, a more robust database. All right, what's next? On this same page, you will notice that just right above the finish setup button, there is install recommended apps, which will install a bunch of extensions like calendar, contact, stalk, mail, and collaborate, uh, collaborative editing. Uh, my, suggestion, my suggestion would be not to do it. So you can uncheck uh, uh, this part so that you get um, a, ba a basic uh, Nextcloud uh, installation. And then on, on top of that, you can uh, browse all the different extensions, start enabling them and experimenting with that. So that would be like this. Uh, you completed the setup and this is the first page that you get. And like I mentioned early, uh, earlier in my in this presentation, it would look almost like you're using Google Drive or maybe OneDrive from Microsoft. So yes, you can have folders, you can have upload files. So you, when I say files, it could be documents, they could be PDF uh, files, they could be MP4, MP3 files, and you start, you know, organizing them online. All right, so. If we move on, uh, I'm going to give you an idea. If you go on the settings uh, and you click on apps, you will find a long list of apps. I mentioned there are above, uh, oh, well, sometimes we call them apps, sometimes we call them extensions. They are basically the same thing. All right, it's just a jargon that we use. So yes, there are, I think, more than 200 of these apps or extensions that you can enable and disable as you wish and you will have all the different uh, facilities and features uh, in your Nextcloud instance. Uh, at the beginning, when I was talking about uh, features, I mentioned uh, federation, federated sharing. So what is federated sharing? All right, uh, let's take the example of email. You can have a, a Gmail account, all right? Your friend can have a Yahoo account and you can, you can still send an email to, from the Gmail to the Yahoo and the person from Yahoo replies you, all right? These are two different email services and yet they can communicate, they can transfer messages and they can transfer files in the form of attachments, all right? Uh, Nextcloud Federation is, works in a similar fashion. Okay, so I can have uh, a Nextcloud installation uh, at home, at my place, and let's say Vidush or Marin, our, our dear host here today, they can have their own Nextcloud uh, instances uh, running uh, at their place or maybe at their workplace, and we can still exchange files without using email, uh, just by specifying the username of the Nextcloud instance, uh, sorry, the username in the Nextcloud instance, uh, and then the fully qualified domain name of the Nextcloud instance. For example, if you look at the at the screenshot here, you will notice that uh, if you go on your uh, personal your personal profile on Nextcloud uh, and you click on sharing, you will find the information under Federated Cloud. You see, it's written your federated cloud ID. In this case, it is running in a container and uh, there is no fully qualified domain name. That is why it says, okay, your name is Ish at localhost and it specifies the port 8080 because it is not on the default HTTP port. Okay, 
now if your uh, next cloud installation uh, was done uh, let's say in a subfolder on your web server for example uh, you could be on example.com slash next cloud then your complete federated cloud id would be similar to this uh, your username that is in my case it would have been ish at uh, uh, let's say example.com slash next cloud pretty easy okay uh, now, how do you share a, a file with uh, somebody's federated cloud ID? Even that is pretty simple and pretty obvious. See, you just click on the file and as you click on the right side uh, of your window, you will see there is this, uh, this bar with the different options about sharing, okay? And uh, you can share it uh, by using a name a name is means a username of somebody else on the same uh, Nextcloud instance, all right? Or you can use the federated cloud ID, and in this case, the file will be automatically shared uh, to on another Nextcloud instance um, outside your network, okay? And uh, thirdly, you can share the file using email address. What will happen here, uh, for example, if I specify the email address of Vidush, uh, once I complete sharing, Vidush will receive an email from my Nextcloud uh, server and uh, it will receive a private link to download the file. This is how the sharing happens using email. And uh, well, uh, that brings us pretty much uh, everything that I wanted to cover uh, about a basic self-hosted private cloud uh, instance. It's uh, no magic. Uh, you can start by simply running one simple command, okay? And you will have everything to start tinkering about once you are confident enough uh, how uh, that this is the solution you want to use, whether personally, uh, whether uh, in your workplace, in a corporate environment, then you just have to do a little bit more research on the different extensions that would be appropriate for you and you're good to go. So, thank you guys. Uh, that would be almost everything on my end. Uh, thank you, merci, dhanyavad to everybody who has been listening and watching this presentation. <laughs> That's my email address. If you have comments, questions, I will be very glad to answer. Yes. Hey! Hey! That so I'm, I'm waiting. It I'm is. waiting for those um for those sharings um that you mentioned. You're gonna send to me. I've got to st set up my <laughs> own next cloud first, but yeah, <laughs> I'll be looking forward federated, to that. Yes, federated sharing. It's federated a, it's sharing. A, it's a, Yes, it's a relatively new concept. Uh, I do not think a lot of people use it. Uh, well, they use it without even thinking thinking about it. For example, yeah. you're on Google Drive, you're sharing a file with somebody else. Uh, it's not exactly federated sharing, but mm -hmm. it's a sort of that. Yeah, it's yeah, a yeah. version of that, of, of that, let's say. Um, Actually, this is really interesting because uh, if you if you can run your next cloud on, for example, something you can run it locally, right? Um, you, you don't mm -hmm. need to, to have it on online. So if you run yeah. it on a Raspberry Pi or something or a NAS at home, that's that's a sweet setup that you got there. I'm exactly. all for going private. <laughs> exactly. So, what do you think about someone if he's running uh, Nextcloud, let's say, on um, an Azure and Azure server somewhere? He has a web service or something running, uh, a VM, and he puts his Nextcloud setup there. Does this defeat the purpose of going private, or do you think that's still a viable thing to uh, do? No, uh, I I wouldn't really mind. When, when I use the, uh, the example of Google Drive, uh -huh. Google Drive is not private cloud it is a public mm -hmm. cloud yeah okay? because it is a service that the public can, can can use whereas if you go on azure you have a private dedicated server, server yeah. a, a, a virtual machine whatever you call it okay. it's different because the contract that your company or you as an individual you're going to have with microsoft with all the legal terms and the legal blah blah is what you can use as proof to show to the data protection commissioner that these are the, you know, the safeguards yeah. that I'm putting. I have a solid contract with Microsoft where Microsoft is bearing the responsibility that 
you know, the personal this data, is mine. The private yeah. data. Yeah, this is yeah. mine. Nope, this is, this is not a public cloud. Uh, other people have access to this machine or whatever. I, I it's it's mine. So yeah. it's a bit different. Uh, else, if you if you're really paranoid as an individual of your company where you have a lot of you know sensitive, sensitive information, yeah. may, maybe maybe health related information or maybe financial information, if you're yeah. an insurance company. Then probably uh, you, even if you want to go as your the Azure way, you will have it on premises. You know, I think yeah, Azure does, you does already provide have that. something like that, and yeah. that would be the the pretty you know the sort of balance uh, to have yeah, it. Yeah. Um, we do have one question. Um, does Nextcloud allow you to build your own custom extensions, and if so, what language do they uh, um, support? Yes. Sir. PHP, PHP, and a lot yes. of uh, the next cloud or ex, uh, apps and components. You, uh, sorry, apps and extensions use mm -hmm. Symfony components. So if you are into uh -huh. PHP and Symfony development, uh, you look at the code of uh, the next cloud source code. Well, You'll be right you will <laughs> exactly. You you will picture yourself in that. Yeah. And I, I must tell you that the Nextcloud community is very, uh, very welcoming. So do not hesitate. Mm -hmm. uh, take the leap. Shout out to them, and you know, yeah. and it's all the open source adventure. Yeah, yeah I've been really personally personally to some people. So <laughs> yeah, no, sorry, I didn't. Get it. Marin. Yeah, right. uh, you already converted some people. I was checking oh. the chat, and yeah, we like. Oh, yeah. I want to try. Yeah, there are quite yeah, a few people who are interested. All for it. Uh, open to the next. Oh, now you, you might try to find uh, a relationship between OpenSUSE and Nextcloud because they are closed communities. There are quite a few OpenSUSE contributors who also contribute in Nextcloud. Uh, yeah. I think uh, uh, a former community manager of Next uh, of OpenSUSE is now uh, the PO or the community manager of Nextcloud. Uh, Yoss. So uh, his name is Josh Portlinviet. Uh, well, I might mispronounce the name, uh, but yeah, there is you know uh, a lot of exchanges between these two communities. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, as from OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, I think um, next the next cloud client is already in there, um, or something. I heard that somewhere. Um, just don't take my word for it. Maybe check it out. But I think um, um, you already have the Nextcloud client packaged in OpenSUSE, whereas for things like Ubuntu, you have to download it. Uh, but it's all it's all there. So um, I, I, I won't be surprised. I definitely I won't be surprised because these two communities uh, they are so so engaged together. They might have yeah. already you know packaged uh, the client and put it there. Yeah, oh, I I, uh, I just checked it actually. It's true. It's true. Next cloud desktop <laughs> right. package included all in right. OpenSUSE. <laughs> all right. And and you know how difficult it is uh, sometimes to find desktop clients for Linux. Yeah. A lot of times I had the problem. Yeah, maybe that's why they already like with this close collaboration, as you mentioned. Maybe that's why they they give you like one step further. They give it to you um, yeah. from the get go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so ish. Um, this thank was a great so session. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so much for being here. Um, do you have any closing comments, um, things you want to throw out to our viewers before uh, we close the session? Uh, well, uh, I thank you both, Marine, Vidush. I thank everybody who watched the presentation. Thank you, MSCC, for making this happen, virtual DevCon. Otherwise, we would not have it, uh, a conference this year. Yeah. Uh, I'm really looking forward to the physical conference next year Same. and the other events of the MSCC this year before the end of the year. Yeah, as we so, all are. <laughs> we'll all meet again. Yeah, we'll all yeah. meet again, physically That's maybe. Let's see. Yes. Um, let's with that, let's conclude this session. Thank you for being here, for Thank joining so our, our stream for a bit. Um, yeah, we'll see you in the next one. Maybe I'll come visit yours in a, in a, in a few. <laughs> <laughs> All right. OK. Bye. Thanks a lot, Ish. Bye. So, so that was, Yeah, that was Ish. Yeah. He always talks about, like, so, he, he always comes with such interesting topics um, every mm -hmm. once in a while. In every DEF CON, like, uh, there was once he talked about microservices. Um, I think I, I talked okay. about microservices on that same DEF CON, and 
uh, oh. we had like a, <laughs> we had like a chat. <laughs> it was awesome. Yeah, it's 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 what geeks do. So um, yeah. yeah, I love his sessions. And next cloud. <laughs> that sounds. I, I must admit, I you it use very a lot of cloud. Clear. Yeah, use we use cloud. cloud, and yeah, next cloud looks very interesting actually. It looks private. That's what I'm gonna say. Yes. <laughs> it looks private. Yes. I mean, I don't, I don't, I'm not a fan of um, not knowing where my information is going mm -hmm. and that's... And who that's can access case. it. Yeah. But, I, mean, I mean, Ish is not with us to give some opinion about this right now, but this would have been interesting. Um, there there yeah. was the thing um, mm -hmm. about Apple iCloud where, where they had leaks. Um, oh my God, I remember ago. this. Yeah, we are not going to go into too much details, but it's not the first, in not. <laughs> it's yeah, not the it, first it's instance. <laughs> <laughs> it happened before. It probably will happen again, not just with Apple iCloud. This this can happen mm -hmm. with Google Drive. This can happen with OneDrive. You don't have control over those products. They are not your products. It's like you took your files, you put them on your friend's you machine. Them out there. Yeah. And you're like, yeah, keep it safe it's for me. It's safe. <laughs> you, know, you, you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know how, how this is being treated. How does he use his machine? So this is kind of what happens when you leave your data to, um, to Google Drive. Or, I'm not saying they are, they are good they are services. Bad, huh? but yeah. <laughs> they are not I get bad, what you mean. But there are some it's, concerns it's that personal comes with to it. You. Mm -hmm. And they, to be fair, they openly in the terms and conditions. And so do you read the terms and conditions, Marine? <laughs> do you? Whoa, is, is this like an inquisition? <laughs> Am I being put on the spot right now? <laughs> no, but I did once, and actually they do mention that um, they, they cover it, like they, they don't hide it. They know, they say we are a public cloud. And um, this is, you know, this is how we work. And you got to know the risks that, that come with it. Um, yeah. So knowing those risks and myself being a bit paranoid, um, I actually well, we, would love to try Nextcloud. And I'm actually thinking of really what I said to is setting up that Raspberry Pi, connecting mm -hmm. to a NAS and, uh, and try out and see how it works. We have Andrew, Andrew Thomas in the, <laughs> in the no. chat. Hey, Andrew, how are you doing? Um, <laughs> He says he's going to add Nextcloud for his future smart home. Hey, I'm working on a smart home project. Like, like it's, a, it's a custom one um, from scratch. I'm, I I'm remember not this. Yeah. I think I showed it to you, uh, like a video or something yes. to, to see how it works. Yeah, I think you showed me your basic design. Yeah, how, yeah. Yes. yeah. Uh, Andrew, let's, let's work together on this. Come on. <laughs> All right, let's take a quick break here. Um, um, for the people watching, get some, get some food, get something to drink, relax, and uh, let's meet back up here. All right? Yeah, we'll be back soon. No stress. Yeah. All right. Bye. Till then. Yes, thank you. Cheers. Cheers.